Welcome to freephotoshop.com. My name's Matthew Whiting, and I'd like to welcome you to our latest video series, A Beginner's Guide to Photoshop Elements, where I'm going to introduce you to everything you need to know to get up and running inside Adobe's consumer level image editing program. Now, one question I get a lot is what is the difference between Photoshop and Photoshop Elements? Well, to answer that very briefly, Photoshop is a professional level image editing application designed primarily for people that work in the trade. Photoshop Elements, on the other hand, is designed primarily for the consumer market, so it's aimed at the home enthusiast. And as a result, you get an extremely powerful program for a fraction of the price of the full version of Photoshop. And when I say a really powerful program, you've got to bet that I mean it. In fact, over the course of the next 10 videos, I'm not just going to talk about why Elements is powerful, I'm going to show you with classroom style accuracy and real life examples. And more than that, I'm going to cover an array of subjects, starting at the beginning with the bare basics and culminating in a real life poster project. I'm hoping to mix together an informative yet creative blend of ideas and principles that will help you use Photoshop Elements to its full potential. For more information on exactly what we'll be covering over the next 10 videos, then visit the free Photoshop website at www.free, as in the number free, photoshop.com and follow the tutorial links to this guide. The way I like to see it is that Photoshop Elements ships as free applications. The organizer, which allows you to organize and view your images. The quick fix mode, which enables you to perform basic adjustments to your photographs and the full edit mode which gives you a no holds barred editing environment where just about anything is possible. In reality these three features combine to make one program but thinking of them as free will help you understand how things work and how this series is organized. Now before we get started let me just give you a few pointers to get you heading in the right direction. Firstly, if you have any comments or questions on any of these videos, then please get in touch. You can contact me using the contact form available on the freephotoshop.com website. Secondly, as you're working on your images and files, I'd always urge you to avoid saving over the original versions. A great feature of Photoshop Elements is that it makes it very difficult to save over the original files. Instead, it guides the user into saving the edited version in something called a version set, but more on that later. And finally, I'd highly recommend you follow along with me by downloading all the project files that accompany the series and trying out some of these techniques yourself. And I say that because in my experience, the best way of remembering things is to actually go ahead and do them. The second best way is to just watch a video tutorial. So if you're not wanting to follow along, it's absolutely fine to just watch the videos. If you do want to follow along, however, or you just want to have a look at the files, then I'll make sure that they're all available on the freephotoshop.com website. And all we have to do now is open up Photoshop Elements. Once you've selected it from your application menu, or if you'd prefer your desktop shortcut here on the PC, or the alias on the Mac, then you'll be presented with a welcome screen like this one with four options. From here we can enter the organizer to organize and browse our images. We can enter the editing mode to make changes to existing images. We can create a document from scratch or we can set up our files to be shared via our website, an email or by printing them out amongst other options. In the next video we're going to dive into the organizer for now, I hope you enjoy this series on Adobe Photoshop Elements. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.